What's going on, brothers? We're back here again. This is Two Brothers Arguing. My name's Alex. This is Christian. And we're here today, and we're going to talk about um, some clothing topics. Um, Supreme just dropped their um, fall line. Or was it fall winter line? And on, I believe this Thursday, they'll be doing their online drop. Um, so if you're looking forward to that, be sure to give that that thumbs bu- thumbs up button down below hit that hit that button also hit that subscription button down below as well you know give us a su- get us a subscribe let's get up to a thousand we're trying to get to a thousand subscriptions before the end of this year so we'll continue to do be doing these podcasts these two brothers arguing between me and my brother talking about um you know all types of topics and so like i said today we were t- discussing the supreme drop and other um clothing brands such as palace um, you know, things that we're just interested in general. Me and my brother are heavy in, into um, clothes and um, sneakers and whatnot. Um, so, um, what are your thoughts on, on Supreme, like, in general? Not just this drop, but in general. Like, is Supreme... Is Supreme... Uh, I mean, obviously, it's the hottest hottest brand on the market, but is it worth is it worth the cop? I think um, if, you're, if you're old head, not really. If you're newer head, yeah. I feel like the, the last summer... Or this this last collection that came out was well, kind of lackluster. It, there's nothing really special. Well, I I disagree. But that's because you're a newer head. I mean, you're gonna look at it and say this is completely different than what I've seen ever. No, well, I'm not an old, I'm not a newer head. I'm a I, I'm I would say. Well, I mean, as far, as far as Supreme, yeah, I'm new to to the brand as Supreme. Mm-hmm. But I mean, I've always been into. I'm not a, a new head as in in the case of as like streetwear brand. No, I get that. But to the name of the Supreme in general, oh, you're yeah. new to it. So I feel like you're looking at the brand as it's new, right? And when you look yeah. at things that are new, and you're like you're excited for it, but. But the collaborations they did are sick, man. They, they were whatever. They, if you compare them to like past cla- collabs, uh-huh. they were they were better. Like the Champion collab, they were like dude the Lacoste eh. brand, the Lacoste collaboration that, that hit everybody out of nowhere. But it's not something that everybody's that looking collab for. was sick. You could, I think that that had to be at least number two. No, out of, before the Louis Vuitton was number one. Obviously, everyone everyone is super hyped up about the. the it, Louis Vuitton. Yeah, was it hyped up? Yeah, but at the same time, if you look at the it history was, of it, uh-huh. it's kind of. It's Lou. It's LV. Just it's reaching for for attention because, uh, Supreme they had done it before mm-hmm. in the early two thousands, and LV they had put a they put a, a halt to that by saying, hey, you can't use that. That's ours, mm-hmm. right? So use what? Uh, they used the monogram, not the monogram, but the font like um, the yeah was it the monogram print? Yeah, it was like it was the, the, the LV print, they, but they did it with Supreme. Yeah. Or so and LV didn't like that, so they said, hey, you can't do that. That's uh-huh. ours. So what happened? They had a t- they had they had skateboards, they had t shirts, and they had hats, uh, and they made Supreme. They had to basically just pack order everything and say, hey, uh-huh. we gotta take all this off the shelves uh-huh. because LV said that they can't do that. And now what? Ten years, probably ten plus years later, LV is like, you know what? Let's do a collab with Supreme. Clearly, LV isn't doing the same. Uh, or no, I think what it is is that LV they know that they're not so hot with the youth, uh-huh. right? The younger crowd. So they had to go out and say, hey, Supreme, you're the you're the high end brand of streetwear. Can you come with the high end brand of high fashion? Yeah. And team up with this and and so, potentially make make give us more clients. So do you think do you think Louis Vuitton is is a uh, is is considered a hype beast brand now? Yeah, uh, I think they were is always considered high beast, but I think because now because of the Supreme label uh-huh. with it, I think it's just. I mean, that's super high beast. Yeah, it's super. Yeah. So I I think it was I think. It was it was it for. The the consumers of the brand, mm-hmm. yeah, but I think more 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 for the fact of LV just seeing, needing a brand to just up them as cool. So again. Supreme didn't need, even need LV. No, they didn't. Did I think Supreme did it because it was like, this is a good look. Well, I mean, man, those what those bags, those uh, those duffel bags, mm-hmm. the backpacks, man, those were just hot. I was a little sad. I was a little sad that uh, they didn't do online an online release because I mean it's kind of hard for us to to go out um, to either LA. To you know, to make purchases like that. Mm-hmm. But I mean, even if you went to LA and tried buying it, you're dealing with just so much LA fuckery that it's very hard for you to even go get it because you're gonna you're in LA where there's gonna be like ten thousand real stars want trying to get your their hands on that. So you even, and everybody got a plug now. Yeah, true. So like it, that uh, that that JC guy from um, mm-hmm. uh, yeah that from Vegas, right? Yeah. Like him, he was he was talking about how uh, he got hooked up. And that he got to order, he got to place his order, order yeah. before the drop even mm-hmm. happened. Yeah. So people like that, you know, 
But that's just good network network networking for him though. He's in the business of having to resell stuff. So for him to be able to have tips at that, it's not it's not like it's unfair in the sense it's he made connections with the right people, then he he's capable of doing that. Yeah. So he, that's just him using his net, his network his skills. Network. No, I completely understand. Yeah. But I mean there's people like uh, people like him that are getting, you know, early early access to success, which is limiting limiting uh, limiting it to people like us normal people that have to like either wait or have to try to play resell for this stuff which is ridiculous because I'm not going to pay resell well, that's on the item because I, I know I'm it's not, it's not worth that price I'm not going to get no it isn't but it may not be worth the price to you but to the consumers that want to buy it uh, it's the worth the price to but them but man that is not a good financial and, decision and it's, especially since we're, in, we're in, the, in the in the years of where like what it, what what's my outfit cost so that I can show off yeah, everyone's you know, trying to flex. Exactly, and uh, people don't understand that you can get you, people. You don't gotta pay retail mm-hmm. to look um, fashionable. You don't. Yeah. And most people that are the most fashionable, they honestly make most of the clothes by themselves. Yeah, that's true too. So I, you know, like especially like here in the states, you don't find that much fashionable people. Especially in LA, not really. You don't find a lot of fashion people. It's you see, it's, it's the same shit. You but see. some high fashion stuff does look good. I mean the fit the some of the fits is do look better because no, I mean just right. recently I when I bought the Stone Island um, sweater like that's compare not, that's that's not Stone considered Island high fashion huh that's not considered high fashion that's a brand that's been around since the eighties so what is what is Stone Island high, uh, what, what would you Stone consider Stone Island is the North Face of of the Europe all right I oh well, I don't like North Face like that though <laughs> I, I I would I could even I compare get, them no. because Stone Island man that. But they put they put uh, out they put out they they put out like really quality like good they put quality out, they put stuff. out tech garments huh they put out tech car- tech yeah garments. but I mean the, it's just I don't know the fit just the fit I don't know if it's is it, is it like a, maybe is it because it's a European fit that's probably why it fits a little bit bigger yeah. better on me because I'm a slimmer fit yeah. person but I mean before Drake started wearing it um, did you know of it no I didn't exactly so it's it, that's a European brand bro. but did it's, Drake would so then Stone Island would consider to be a hype beast brand because it, it, yeah. well yeah because it's got built some hype off yes, of Drake right. Yes. But yeah, and I'm, I'm happy Drake introduced me to it because that brand is sick. Yeah, I felt yes, I did fall if, in love if with you it. Were look, if you were to look at Stone Island, it isn't high fashion. It is the North Face of Europe. Uh-huh. That's it. If you need a nice sweater that's gonna last you ten years, go buy a Stone Island jacket. That's how it is. Uh, but at the at the same sense, I mean, you're looking at the North Face as just like an outdoor brand. But if you actually did you like dive deep into the North Face brand in general, uh-huh. you understand that that's a brand that its heritage is just crazy. If they, is that why Supreme messes with them super heavy? Yeah, I mean, if you look at the purple label that oh. you can't even get here in the states, it's it's out in Japan. It's ran by uh, Nanamica, which is a Japanese brand. Oh. Uh, they they basically do all the they do all the concept work for pur- the purple label. Uh-huh. Look into the purple label; you actually find a lot of great stuff. All Japan right. is doing a lot of good wavy stuff right now. Uh-huh. But North Face, they've essentially that market of purple label is. It's crazy. I wish out they had it out here because I would want to buy it. Because uh-huh. that label is just so dope. purple label is a brand br- uh, branched out from North Face. Mm-hmm. So all right, but like compared, so, so, so I mean, I, what I what I'm trying to get at is, is is Supreme really worth the you know the cop? Is Supreme worth the the per? I mean, all right. So I spent two hundred dollars on a sweater for by by uh-huh. Stone Island, and I would definitely say yeah, it was worth it because the quality on that on that on that piece was it was worth it you can tell you can feel you can feel the difference between anything else i mean compared to like what are you gonna pay for, you, you pay 150 dollars for a for a um a supreme hoodie right is that how much how much a supreme hoodie yeah. retails and for like and um for resale on a supreme hoodie you're gonna spend about 300 dollars. you spent and said if you couldn't get a supreme hoodie you can go and pay uh, you know 100 dollars less and get a stone island a sweater hoodie or whatever for a better quality hoodie and i think the I, in my in my opinion it's a better look but i guess that's what people pay because it's you know that's it's their personal preference but not just that too it's like you want to uh people kind of buy uh-huh. for things that are kind of out of the out of the norm uh-huh. so i mean would you rather buy supreme where 10 out like 9 out of 10 kids are wearing uh-huh. or would you buy a stone island sweater that's one out of 10 kids are buying well, me personally, I'd buy Stone Island because the well, the, like, I'm I'm go, I'm going based off quality. I think that's what's wrong with a lot of these the, the these newer these newer streetwear uh, streetwear kids but Supreme, that are getting into the in, into streetwear. 
Um, cause Supreme Supreme opened up streetwear, and I mean, not not a lot of people were into streetwear. Cause I remember back in the day, before streetwear even had J's like J Jordans, um, and Adidas are all all streetwear stuff now. It's all coinciding with the streetwear culture. Yeah. There was it was just Nike SB. I remember when it was just Nike SB and like Air stuff Forces. like that. Air, yeah. yeah, and like all that was str- like the streetwear streetwear brand. Yeah. And so, like, this newer streetwear culture, I think people... It's um, off of hype. Well, it's, yeah, it's off of hype, and they're not even following for equality. Like, like Anti-Social Social Club, when I bought... And I paid paid the money for that, for for that, for, for the clothes that I bought. Um, and I and I got I got the shirts, and um, the quality was not... I, it's honestly, like, the quality was not worth what I had paid for. But, I mean, it's a great... I like the concept. I, I mean, I guess that's what I paid for was the concept of the brand. It, and it, you you just well realistically you bought Gildan t shirts and screen print. Yeah. That's all you bought it for. But for somebody I I think that they get a and it's also they get a lot of bad looks for that. But if you look at a lot of brands like Thrasher, they mm-hmm. use Gildan. This is a different they have like different blends of T shirts, right? Yeah, like yeah, no, I styles. completely understand. So that. a lot of a lot of T shirt companies that you would never know. I mean it's not their their Gildan their Gildan tees that they print on are not like Walmart Gildan. Mm. 'Cause you can I, I I can do a comparison definitely. Like the 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 quality on, on that Gildan shirt is uh, yeah. it's it is a lot different. It's yeah. but it um it doesn't last as long. And I think now as a as a older streetwear head I'm going more for quality, something that's gonna last me a little bit longer, mm-hmm. and that's gonna look, uh, it's gonna continue to look nicer. But then again, like the anti social social club T shirt, I bought it during the spring and summer release, and it's already like super faded out already. And I don't know if I'm gonna keep it that way, cause I mean, kind of that faded out look is in style, so it doesn't really matter. Yeah. yeah. Or I was also thinking about um or re dyeing it. And now is that is that a thing that you think people do with a lot of their like uh the streetwear shirts? I mean, like, like Supreme and stuff. I, I haven't purchased a Supreme shirt, so I don't know how, like, like when I as far as like quality, like if you, you wash certain clothes, like they'll last you a lot longer, like depending on the quality. Mm-hmm. So if Supreme shirts a forty five dollar t shirt and it takes a few wa- you throw in the washer and wash it a few times, and you get it and it's already all faded. You think people are re dyeing their shirts or they're just gonna just let it throw? No, they'll resell it. And they'll still make money off of a faded Supreme shirt. Yeah, you can go to a round two and sell it for them. It depends on the type of t shirt it is. Honestly, really? if you have a, I mean, most most kids they're not gonna wash their t-shirts. Honestly, uh-huh. they're not because they don't want to risk it. That's just how it is. So what are the people doing? They're dry cleaning. No, Which they're I, not. No, they're not, not washing even. it at all. They're not. Wa- they're just. They're just stenching it up. Or they're basically. Oh, it's nasty. It's nasty, yeah. But like, if I mean, how many times do you wash your jeans? Uh, I do dry cleaning for my jeans. Do you really? Yeah, I do. Okay. Well, like for me, like I don't wash my jeans. Well, but then again, there's different like raw denim, right? Nobody they like they like to. No, you're supposed. It's called curing. I think that's the term. Uh-huh. Uh, but you're supposed to wash it like say every six months. Uh huh. And it's, it's, a, it's a different type. You're not you're not putting it in the washer because uh-huh. the dye would just bleed out. So it's a it's a different way of it. I think like you put it into buckets and then from the bucket you put like, a cure in it and then you go to another bucket like cold water or some shit like that. Uh-huh. I never had a pair of raw jean, denim, but. I know, I know. There's a process to it, uh-huh. but that's like the thing. The raw denim, those are pretty cool because you're telling a story. Like that's like literally like a story for a five years of your life. Like I were, like, imagine like having a pair of denim that you're gonna say I wore these for five fucking years. Like look at what I went through. Like every hole on there, you were able to remember and say I I got this hole because I jumped over a gate and I got stuff. It's a storytelling uh, pair of jeans. That's uh-huh. it. Um, but uh, like that for t-shirts wise. No, there's a market for everything. I mean, yeah, think about it. I mean, let's say you have a Supreme T-shirt that you have, you have, you bought thirty dollars, right? And it's faded. There'll be a fifteen year old kid that doesn't have a lot of money, and you're selling it for twenty. They'll mm-hmm. buy it off you. It's a Supreme. You're, they're not buying because of the graphic. They're buying because of what it, what brand it is. Get me? Yeah. Well, that's, I, that's what the high beast thing is. Yeah, right? they're not buying for the look of it. Like a lot of people, like that buy Supreme, they don't even know most of the collabs that they're doing. Mm-hmm. Like people, like you can. You, oh yeah, when they like when Complex does the interviews, yeah. right? They're like, hey, so do you know like Michael? What Michael ja- even Jackson though, did? Even though I do think Complex, they do that for a reason. They, I think they do that. I think they do well, that. Well, it's media, right? They're yeah. uh, like what? Uh, I think they're just trying to paint a bad limelight on the people that buy it. They want to make uh, them look dumb. Uh, uh, I you think, think you think uh, Supreme has something to do with it? Like they're trying to they're trying to die because I mean Supreme wasn't as big a, 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 as hype. It wasn't people liked Supreme back in the day because it was a limited like it was a brand that 
was super limited. Not a lot of people can get it. And now, like, um, recently I was watching an interview and they were saying, like, a lot of pe- everybody is, I mean, wears Supreme. Like, the Supreme lines are, like, ridiculously long. And um, this the culture for Supreme is just a lot different now. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, of course. So you think this, you think Complex is 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 doing that because they're trying to kill kill the hype off Supreme? No. No. No, 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 no. You see the you see the ink is wearing Supreme. Well, yeah. I mean, it'll, it'll be, make it easier for them to per- make purchases of Supreme if they love Supreme that much. But um, I think I would say I think it's kind of hard. It's it's hard to say like who's allowed to wear that brand. Uh-huh. Because it, it's 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 a brand that's um, meant for skaters, uh-huh. but you don't even have skaters wearing it themselves. Yeah, because uh, a lot of skaters hate it, hate but, Supreme. Yeah. Because like, it, a it's lot a, of like hardcore skaters, like yeah. like hard like that are rocking like. Because it's a bad look. That's all. It's just a bad look. Like oh, like all right, I see this entrepreneur on Instagram wearing Supreme. Like okay, that's against uh-huh. the norm. Like you're not you wear a business suit. You're an entrepreneur. Yeah. It it's it's every it, the whole concept of just clothing in general. It's uh-huh. just disappeared. Yeah, oh, like, where, like, it was categorized, right? And so it's, like, there's no more categories. Yeah, so, like, okay, like, you never see it in your life, but it's okay for you to wear Supreme or Thrasher. That's what people look at that and say, like, that's that's just, that's not cool, man. Like, uh-huh. you're, you're being fake. It's a fake persona of yourself. Mm-hmm. Like, you're just buying it because you know that it's... Because you're trying to fit in. Yeah, that's all. Yeah. And people don't like that. And that's the skaters. You, most it's skaters like, that you know, they're real uh-huh. about their shit, and they don't like that. So people aren't being true to themselves no more. No. no one's unique no, no. more. No you're, one's, yeah, you're no. putting up this whole little persona that really no isn't original. You. Yeah, so, I mean... Um, yeah, it's it's a brand that's not really doesn't have the heritage anymore. Mm. I mean, that has a heritage, of course, but it's just not it's not stuck to its identity. But then again, you can't really blame you can't blame the brand for that because when people notice that, oh well, this brand is having a nice resale value. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm gonna. I'm gonna, I'm gonna take trying, advantage of yeah, that. They're just trying to make yeah. a business. And out I, of I know James James Jebbia, who's the owner of Supreme. He's come. He's came out and said before, like I don't like resell. I, uh-huh. I, I, it kind of makes me mad or something in that format. Yeah. Um. But I mean, how do they stop? You can't stuff? exactly. You can't just go up to. You can't just have people come in and say, "Show me a, a skateboard card that says like shows me that you're, you're a real skateboarder." Yeah. You can't do that. So I think yeah, James, I think the Supreme is mass general. producing. Well, if, um, if they become like mass, like say like Supreme sold out and it was like we're gonna start selling at Zoomies. Oh, that'd be. I don't. I don't think they'd ever do that. But yeah, I think if, if they were to, it, 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 it just killed kill it. it. it yeah, killer, right? Yeah. And so that's probably why they don't do it. No, at, at the at the end, they're a brick and mortar. You know, they keep it in house uh-huh. with themselves. They don't want to venture out. Like they'll sell. They'll just sell to themselves. They'll sell. Uh, they'll distribute themselves. Right now, they do. They they do do it out of like Dover Street, and they'll do with other like um, brick and mortar uh, boutiques. Mm-hmm. So um, they keep it. They keep it to themselves. Yeah. They don't want to go out. They don't want to be family owned. Yeah. Yeah. Because like they still have that core like skateboard. So yeah, well, I mean, it doesn't have like a skateboard look anymore. Because I mean, you look at the fall, yeah, their fall line. It's like Gucci. Huh? It's a Gucci look. Yeah, yeah. When, uh, they had like a there was a leather jacket with like little like tassel like oh like but, the Indi- it was like an Indian style jacket right well that's just that I mean that's just I mean like biker jacket you gotta understand as a brand like you can't just stick to one like you can't stick to one genre either like you got if you if you want to be if you want to have a brand as a business you have to be able to uh, like to keep it going yeah you have to be able to say hey okay well you know we did this last collection let's do a little something you know I'm kind of inspired by this mm. let's go by this you know so I mean you can't just stick to one thing and say like oh skateboard has all these other routes you can go. Yeah. You have to be able to say, hey, there's thousands of different topics we could do. Uh-huh. Like, for example, the Obama one. Yeah. They did that right when, like, Trump was going in. You that know? was a ugly... That was so ugly. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I did not like that. That was gross looking. But regardless of that, uh, you at a, as a brand, you need to be able to evolve and kind of go. And I think that's where Supreme's going. Uh-huh. I, but I do think people that are, have watched Supreme grow as a brand... They do hate it because, mm-hmm. like, for for me, like, I see Supreme stuff. I'm just like, uh, it's whatever. But I'm, not, I, I, I have a sweater, mm-hmm. yeah. But that was more of me. Like, like did I want to buy? It was impulse buy mainly because I, I was like, I want to see if I could buy it because uh-huh. they had just put it the whole uh, the capture thing. Oh at, yeah, at yeah, yeah, yeah. I wanted to see if I could try and buy one. Yeah. I ended up did trying to buy one. Uh, do I regret it? Yeah, I do honestly because like it's a color that I wouldn't wear. I uh-huh. went to the color that I I thought nobody would buy. Uh huh. It was yeah. It was an impulse buy. Am I gonna wear it? I probably will wear it. Um, Why don't you just resell it? I've tried. Nobody really wants to buy it. Really? Yeah. So you buy that color. Nobody likes. The I color. don't know. I, no, that's what I'm trying to say. Is like it's just kind of like a sweater that really nobody really wanted. Mm. It's not a hyped up piece. Now, if I see Kanye West wearing it, mm. it then it might in my pocket. 
you know, but uh, at the end, of the day, it doesn't bug me that it's sitting in my closet. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna wear it regardless. Um, but yeah, for Supreme, you just have to have the hyped up piece. Uh-huh. That's it. If it's a if it's a piece that isn't like so like, if it's a, just a generic ass piece, mm-hmm. nobody wants to buy. It. Like it, those Nazis. The Nazis are gonna sell for crazy. Yeah, yeah, regardless. But uh, yeah, I think Supreme is gonna is gonna keep going, do their own thing. What about Palace? You think Palace it'll keep up with them? Palace is like the new Supreme, right? It's like the it's like the European Supreme. Yeah, uh, it's it's a cool. It's a. Uh, I think I I would honestly rather I would rather pay uh, money for Supreme than I would pay for Palace. Well, they say Palace actually has better quality. Really? So yeah. that's why the prices are so high. Yeah. But I, I mean, I don't really like the look. I'm not a fan of the look. It, they're, uh, they're, uh, they, they take a. Um, well, I, I it, it's they, they, well, they take a lot of inspiration. It seems like from the '90s, like guests and stuff like that. They a lot of guests. Yes, but like, yes, yes, that's true. Yes, but Supreme does the same thing. So if you look at a lot of Supreme stuff and you compare it to old guests, old Polo, old Tommy. Same thing, just the different. They just have a different type. I think of. they do it a lot better though. You think so? Have I you seen Supreme, it? Supreme, huh? I'll I'll show you. I think I think I know what you're talking about. I've seen certain pieces that yeah that do look um look familiar to like high end brands like that, mm-hmm. and they take a twist on them. Yeah, yeah. But I would say Supreme does it a little bit better than Palace does. Like that's just my opinion. Yeah. Um. But yeah. No, no. Supreme does do it better. They uh-huh. do do it better. But Palace, on the other hand, I think, uh, give it like another year uh-huh. because they just opened the New York one. Uh. The blue, they're, they're, they opened the, like, the brick and mortar for themselves out there in New York yeah. I think that would be a real good I think it's a good one because it, it's getting their name out there you more. think uh, LA might be next? Um, probably. probably maybe? yeah probably I'd say give it a couple of years but um, Palace I, I think they're, they still need to grow they uh-huh. still need to like, they've kind of risen real quickly um, yeah, because they came out of nowhere. I remember when I when I first seen a palace shirt, and I was like, yeah. well, "That's nuts!" Yeah. And I like I like the, the the triangle. What do they call it? What is that? Tri- the trifer. The trifer. Yeah, that, I like that little design. That's like the box logo of Supreme, right? Kind of thing. Yeah, it's like their box logo. But it's not as hype because it, they always do it in like a different scheme. And yeah, they, it's not like crazy. crazy I think they should the just do a, a, a just a, a regular white or like like a like a just a solid color, mm-hmm. not like nothing too. The, crazy the box logo is always gonna be crazy though because like. The fact that it's just like it's just it's a simple box logo uh-huh. with, with like with the back image. Yeah, it's always gonna be different. Yeah, it's mean, always gonna be sim- simple's always better. Though. Yeah, and the trifurc it's it's kind of harder mm-hmm. I think, but I think give Palace a little time and they'll be able to get on the like supreme level, but uh, I think it's gonna be very hard for them to get up there. And another streetwear brand I would say that has um I think it's up there with Supreme and Palace would have to be I think I, I I'm gonna say top three uh, streetwear brands right now would have to be Palace. Supreme and antisocial. I think antisocial is too. Huh? I think Palace has t- taken a little dive. Uh huh. I think antisocial is the one that's above it. I think it goes Supreme antisocial. Yeah. The only reason why I would say antisocial club is three is because they don't even have a store. Is that what? Is that what? Ma- is well, I guess it goes with their their whole like anti so like the whole club portion of their brand. No, I, which makes it because it makes it more limited, right? I mean, if you can, o- you don't even know how to purchase it. No. I mean, you know, I mean, you do. You can only purchase it online, or even when they do like um, random pop ups, like they did the pop up this weekend, um, and it was like it was like two days notice, like barely it had barely told let people know like that they were gonna do a collaboration. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, I or even the one where they were having people call that phone number and it was oh. giving them the uh, yes the what's that Morse code right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean they're making I mean, they're it's going with their brand the, yeah, uh, yeah, the whole no, yeah of course uh, but um I just think it's the way that the, Nick goes about it. Mm. Nick I think Nick is very creative, but I do think it's kind of. It's a lackluster brand because like everything that I see from him, it's nothing new. It's just the type, of, the, type. the type. That's all. And like for the Richardson collab, they had like the Richardson like stamp on the mm-hmm. back of it. There's nothing special, honestly. It's just when I look at the antisocial brand in a whole, it's just another hype brand. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I do give create, I do give him a lot of props because he is creative about the way the way that he does. His, or like he, the way he promotes the, it and markets yeah, it. Yeah. yeah, everything's really creative. But mm-hmm. I would say that it's just kind of like. Eh, cause like it's just the same t-shirt, just different color, same different uh, color, different color. It's a different color typeface, uh-huh. a different color sweater. It's always it's nothing. Never, it's nothing ever new. Like so, what if he somehow? What if they drop something that's some, like kind of like what's? A, I mean, it, like they put out a lookbook, huh? But they had a lookbook that had, like different. I mean, he does a lookbook kind of thing with yeah, with all those girls on his uh, on his uh, on his inst- on his um, yeah, yeah. on the Instagram. It's nothing but like women wearing Supreme. Yeah. 
sex sells? Is that what he's trying to go for? Like, what? is that what he's trying to market? Like, sex sells? I mean, it, maybe, yeah. I can way. see that. I can see that, yeah. Or, like, uh, not not to sex, but, like, luxury. Uh-huh. Because he's kind of painted this kind of picture of where antisocial is compared, is like, is equivalent to a Mercedes. Uh-huh. Or, like, a Ferrari. Uh-huh. You know what I mean? Because, like, when you look at Neek, when you look at Neek, he's driving a 100,000 plus car every week uh-huh. right it's either um, it's either a Ferrari Porsche. a Lamborghini exactly a Porsche or whatever he, he's he, he's influenced by vehicles mm-hmm. he's in love with cars you can clearly but, tell I mean he doesn't just do a, I mean he, they do weird collaborations too like they did the weird one with the they did the the sex toy they did that this year a sex toy and then they did an Adams um, uh, cleaning like for car cleaning but, stuff but, but again that's what he's, so he's interested in. Yeah, so he's... I mean, it seems like... Well, he, yeah. well I mean, it's his club. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, But that's what he's selling. Uh-huh. He's selling a car look and a sex look. All right, and so that's what he's into. Yeah. And so that's what he's selling on as far as antisocial. Yeah, clubs. So I mean, what... Is, is, you don't think there's any... And you don't think there's any evolution that'll come from this brand? I haven't seen anything yet. Uh-huh. How long yet. has this brand be, even been out? I uh, mean, I've only known... I'm about about two about, years about, now. Yeah, two about, years? I would say about two years. Uh, two years, years now? Because he, I think if, I, if I'm correct, he worked at Undefeated, and then uh-huh. he kind of popped off because Kanye wore a hat, uh-huh. had ASSC, uh, AS, ASSC, and then people went off the whole term of Ass Club, uh-huh. and then that's about it. And then and he then had a lot of rage man. after that. Uh-huh. But, um, yeah, about two and a half years, I think. Uh, but he's been pushing it hard, but like I said, it's just nothing new. Uh-huh. It's just a, it's a type that's waved. That's about it. But, and, you know, I seen a, I was at, today I was at the mall, and I, at a, I think it was H&M. And they, they were copying it. Yeah, they copied yeah. it. There was there was an orange hoodie, and it had it didn't say like and it it's what it it said like um like a like some sort of quote, but it was wavy like that. And yeah. then you know how he does like the get weird on yeah. the sides of the on on the sleeves. Yeah, they did that too, but it was like I said like there was like a quote on the sides, mm-hmm. and it was a the waviness. Yeah. And so yeah, like people H and M has is uh, like. They do that a lot, right? Well, They've been jocking the, a lot. From, from what I've uh, heard in the past, was basically what it is is that they they hire they'll hire new um, like designers, uh-huh. and when they come in, they're literally given like a week to create a look. Uh-huh. And what happens is they just look at what's trending. Uh-huh. They copy it and they they and just they format it. it. That's for, they format it as an alternative alternative for H and M or four point one, and then it sells. Because people don't want to, some there's people that they, they don't want to pay. That I mean, price. well, they're not just not necessarily not that they don't want to pay the price, but I think there's people that don't know of these brands. Yeah, of course, yeah. And then they're just you know going H M. They're looking they're for like, the look. Yeah, they see it on Instagram. Like, I need that look. So yeah, I'm I need that it. look. And yeah. they don't know. They don't look into the um, to the culture mm-hmm. of each each brand. And that's know? when you like know. the backstory of each brand. Yeah, I think uh, honestly, I think when you see that stuff, you can see uh, that's when you kind that's it's when you kind of know people are just biting. Yeah, and that, that's I think so. You think. Well, I think that's another topic for another day. But is H and M essentially killing? Uh, yeah, they kill trends. Is H and M killing killing streetwear? Yeah. Or like you know, yeah. So they're not no, no. Streetwear. They're not killing it. They're just biting off the hype. I mean, because they, they know they can make money uh, off of it. Because they know that there's people that aren't as educated. Well, let's uh, let's see what the viewers think, guys. Be sure to leave a comment down below to let us know what you guys think of is H and M killing kill or is is killing is H and M killing the culture. Hashtag that. So I think I think we'll uh, we'll end it on that note. So thank you guys for tuning in. Like my dad always says, shut up and listen, bonehead.